Well, let's stay on the topic of AEW for our next question. Sent to corny drive through at gmail.com from Grant McKenzie in Dundee, Scotland. I wanted to ask your opinion on Cody Rhodes having his own exclusive entranceway on the AEW stage. It reminds me of Kurt Angle's entrance in TNA, but more specifically, the Triple H WrestleMania entrance, which seems to get grander all the time. Kurt was a huge signing for TNA, so I get this. Triple H is part of the McMahon family, so I get that too, even if it is a bit hubristic. Cody, though, that may be the first time the word hubristic, as in reeking of hubris, has ever been uttered on this program. It certainly is. Cody, though, seems a bit over the top, and to me it gives a higher status to him than the rest of the roster. No matter who is world champion, Cody gets the fancy entrance and so is always being presented to the audience as special. I wonder how the other talent would feel about it. What do you think the reaction in the locker room is? And what impact does it have overall, if any? Thanks for the great shows. I think the reaction of the rest of the locker room is, yeah, Cody's one of the EVPs, so he gets the entrance he wants. And I think they've got so many other problems on that program that this is one of the least of them. I think that maybe subliminally, for people who really pay close attention, it helps get Cody over, but as I said, there are so many other roadblocks on the rest of the program that I think it's kind of a non-issue. It's just he wants his own fucking entrance. Um, It is a ridiculous over-the-top it's, entrance it, 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 every well, week. But also, it doesn't make sense to me that, that he comes out and then this group of people walks out from the wings and is with him, and I, he's... He should have Arn with him when he comes out. Arn's his manager. He and Arn should come out. Talent can be in front. Manager can be in back. But they should be together. They should come from the same place, and that's all he needs at ringside. He's a baby face to begin with, so just having a manager at ringside is tough, especially when you want the numerical advantage over a heel. Um, But to have his wife and his brother and his training partner, and his CPA, and the fellow that walks his dog every other Sunday, to come out from the wing and then walk him out there, and then half of them leave, and some of them stay, and I don't know what the fuck, he's going for the 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 walkout crew, the corner crew, like in a UFC fight, but at the same time, there I think you can agree with me on this, there has never been a mainstream professional wrestling promotion or a wrestling promotion that's on any kind of television with any kind of a budget or reaches any amount of people that has been less rooted in reality than AEW. That's fairly a safe statement, right? You know, I don't want to say for sure because there's been some real suck ass shows the last 15 years or so, but but I mean, on a, a any kind of mainstream television basis, with any kind of names involved, any kind of budget, and on a, on on an ongoing basis, this is the least believable, less rooted in reality, less credible, more obviously showbiz promotion that's ever been. And so, why Cody's doing all this? Uh, the the trainer and the coach and the little take he's doing. Per, it was it'd be perfect what he was doing if he was in a pro wrestling program but he's not. So he's bringing out a UFC corner crew consisting of, like I said, his brother and his best friend and his wife and his actual manager and whatever. And it just looks goofy because I don't, there's, there's, there's glimmers of ideas in everything they're doing, but they're all botched up. The entrance presents Cody like the biggest star they have. The booking never does. Yes, exactly. And in all honesty, Cody should have been pushed from day one as the biggest star they have on the babyface side, and Jericho, which he was pushed at day one, as the biggest heel, because that's the way it was. And Cody, you could count on Cody to, to now, unfortunately, you can count on him to have a good match with the fucking parking attendant and the guy fucking putting the cheese sauce on the fucking sausage dogs at the concession stand, but... Cody was the best worker. Cody was 
young enough to be in the generation. He'd had WWF TV exposure, but still he had the genes, he had the name, he had the, the head. He looks great. You would want to push him as a top baby face from the start. The entrance makes sense. You wanted to push Chris Jericho as the top heel from the start. But Cody's, besides the fact you mentioned his booking has been, I don't know what the fuck, here and yon and just all over the place. He's kind of, I mean, he had the classic wrestling matches. He had the match with Dustin. He had a, he had a good match, as I recall, with uh, Jericho, did he not? He had a, Yeah, it, that's probably Jericho's his, best match in AEW. His big, Cody's big match matches were the best things they've still ever done. Um, as far as pro wrestling, his match with Dustin was probably the best pro wrestling match that anybody's done. I've seen in the last two years. It may be Walter and fucking Ilya, but that's modern pro wrestling. There's different styles. Anyway, the point is for fuck's sake, I, you know, it wasn't a stretch to think they would push Cody as the top baby face from the start, but why they didn't do it right and why they've botched it and it started and stopped and he's had these competitive matches with peter avalon and fucking the weird things they've done and brandy is brandy would i would assume would have turned anybody who doesn't like cody 75 percent of it's got to be because he's aligned with brandy and she's been so completely insufferable on the entire run of that program so most of the people that don't like cody i'm sure it's because of brandy um, they say, well, if we get rid of Cody, we won't have to look at Brandy anymore. So, I don't think that's the reason. Well, I don't think that's the reason. At anyway, all. but I mean, he get you know, she got a lot of heat on him being in his shit. If she's over somewhere else away from it, that's okay. But when she was with his shit, she was getting heat on him. She was the was opposite. I felt like when she was doing her own thing, people were saying it's only because of Cody. Remember when, remember the nightmare collective where she was. Oh yeah, what no hairs and she had the bald woman with her. Yeah, you misunderstood. Well, I'm not that's I see what you're saying. If if when she was on her own, they were saying, well, she's only there because of Cody. True. But when she was actually involved in Cody's shit, she was actively making people dislike what Cody was doing at that particular point in time. It was taking it down a notch. Anyway. They, uh, the problem is apparently, and maybe he's doing a, a Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels thing. Bret Hart took a year off because he knew that Shawn Michaels would have a mental meltdown as the world champion and wouldn't be able to draw, wouldn't be able to handle it, wouldn't be able to conduct himself in the locker room and would probably have a nervous breakdown or over, over, overdose, uh, overdose, overdose on drugs, whatever the fuck. Wouldn't you know who won the pony? Bret Hart was gone for a year and Shawn Michaels couldn't fucking handle it. Had a mental meltdown, took a lot of fucking drugs, was an unprofessional prick and didn't draw. So maybe when Cody first heard this fucking plot that they've actually told in public where they were specifically not going to put the belts on Olivier and the Young Bucks for the first year because they didn't want to look greedy, but they were going to go for the second year. Maybe he realized, okay, in the second year, these fucking morons are going to take all the belts and our company is going to go in the fucking hole. So maybe he's figuring, I'll just fucking back up and be over here and let Olivier be the fucking champion and let the Bucks be the tag team champions, let people get sick and fed up with them, and then I can come back in and save it. Maybe that's what his thought is. I don't know. But getting back to the entrance... Yeah, it makes him look special because it should. It's one of the few things that makes anybody on that show look special. He should have been a lot more special because they've shot themselves in the foot because he's one of the only guys that could actually carry this fucking ball if they were doing a wrestling promotion. So, But they've diminished him from where he was to where he is now, like they have everybody else. Well, you know, Jim, when Cody comes out through his long, dramatic entrance way and the music's playing, the oh! everything's happening sometimes he's ready to wrestle sometimes he's in a suit he likes but you to know dress what? up you know what he never looks comfortable no when he's in that suit he looks like he's itching he looks like he's constrained he looks like it's scratchy he doesn't look like he's relaxed and you know that's what a stiff scratchy regular old run-of-the-mill men's dress shirt will do to you 
They'll make you feel uptight. They'll make you pick at your neck and say, oh, what a crowd. They'll be scratchy and they'll make you <laughs> finger yourself underneath your what? fucking armpits and shit. Trying to straighten it out. There's got to be well, a better way to phrase that. <laughs> what? <laughs> they can finger to themselves? Yeah, stick a finger under your armpit and try to pull that scratchy fucking arm seam out from under your armpit when you're sweating in that suit. Well, none of that stuff happens with a shirt from Buttercloth. Folks, we've been talking about these people for quite a while. The people at Buttercloth have made the world's most comfortable t-shirt. If you want to wear a men's dress shirt that fits perfectly and feels great, but feels like you're wearing your favorite t-shirt, you got to go to the people at Buttercloth. Whether you're small and portly or tall and thin or even if you're tall and portly, or just outright if you're a fat fucking slob, whatever you are, they have a range of sizes and fits. So as they say, you'll look like Friday night, but feel like Sunday morning. Actually, I know a lot of people that didn't look very good on Sunday morning. They looked better on Friday night, regardless. Anyway, as we said, it's not stiff and scratchy. It's a revolutionary fabric made with long fiber cotton, a six-way stretch. It's breathable to keep you warm in the wintertime, cool in the summertime. Signature details, tailored fit. This thing was a hit on Shark Tank a couple of years ago. That Robert, uh, what you call it, that I can't pronounce his last name, invested a quarter of a million dollars in these folks. And now look what's happened. Wouldn't you know who won the pony? Robert They're Herjavec. a big deal. Robert who? who? Herjavec. Well, you do and you'll clean it up. I can get you some Pepto-Bismol, though. Anyway, folks. They got a great gifting program with a beautiful gift box because during COVID, nobody wants to go out to the mall. You can ship to multiple addresses in one order and put in personalized notes. It's one-stop shopping. You can send a world of comfort to yourself or every man in your life. Folks, right now, Buttercloth is offering our listeners 20% off your first purchase. Go to Butter. You know how to spell Butter. B-U-T-T-E-R, cloth. That's even easier. C-L-O-T-H, buttercloth.com slash J-C-E. 20% off your first full price order. Buttercloth.com slash J-C-E. They can fit you no matter what you look like. If you've let yourself go, if Norman Frederick Charles, as he used to say, look at the state of you. If you're just all, just all fucked up, they can still fit you. No matter what you look like. Buttercloth. That's right. Very comfortable shirts. We highly endorse them here on the show, but let's get a few yeah, more everybody questions. Everybody looks better in a nice shirt. That's right. Some people I know should wear that nice shirt right over the top of their fucking pointy heads. 